No, <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back, Keith Jesse Pro Noob RC. Um, January eighth, twenty twenty one. It's the day that we are all waiting for. That we got our pre orders on our uh, new Lossy uh, LMT. That's the Lossy uh, Mini Truck. We're gonna call that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Lossy Monster Truck. It's a one ten scale four wheel drive monster truck sponsored by Monster Jam. And with this one is in the son of a digger body trim. Uh, we picked up this one and we also picked up the Grave Digger because you just can't have one. Um, we actually won these ones off of um, waffles, uh, RC waffle draws. Uh, like we said in one of our other videos, uh, definitely get on those sites. These trucks cost us a couple hundred bucks to win each or for the both. So uh, I highly recommend going with that. Uh, what do we got here? One to one scale. Scale looks and performance, officially licensed, Monster Jam body, and cutting edge technology with Spectrum uh, radio, the Firma ESC, and brushless motor. Uh, one thing about the truck is they do come with EC5 battery connector, and they are 2 to 3S capable. Some guys were saying 4. Nice, good packaging. They put the clear plastic like we like to see over top of the images so if it rubs a box it doesn't get damaged. We like to see them when they're doing that. There was times before when other companies weren't doing such things so. In the accessory box we get your manual that's got a couple other parts I'll go over. And you get your DX3 radio. It's a three channel radio. With the third channel button on the radio is intermittent, which means that you press it, it only stays monetary and comes back. Intermittent or monetary, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't, it's not three position or two position, it's just press it, goes or press it that way, you know what I mean? Do, 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 do. So, uh, kind of limited to what you can use that for on this truck. But these, if you have a Spectrum radio, this has an SR315 receiver with it. So all you got to do is bind up like your DX5 rugged or whatever you're running like that. Yeah, your newer DX5, DX6, something like that. Um, so inside here, we get a manual that comes in several different languages. It's very short to the point. I think it's like four pages of each language. Um, yeah, basic controller stuff. Uh, one thing they don't uh, give you, uh, I believe in here, is how to set up your endpoints on the radio. You can set up the endpoints, uh, your EPA function, but there's like a magical code you need to be able to punch into the radio to be able to do it. I, I see about the ESC programming. Now with these Spectrum Firma ESCs, you can take a programming card from a hobby wing, I'm so told by my friends in the hobby, and you can plug it in and you can just use your hobby wing programming card to reprogram the Firma ESCs. I know it worked on the Axial Gladiator, and that was a Firma ESC, so I'm assuming it's the same programming for this guy, so that's cool. But yeah, if you want to learn your EPA setting, you're going to need to go on to... Um, Yeah, you'll need to go on to um, YouTube. There's a few other guys that have videos up on it. We haven't we haven't learned how to do it, so we haven't done a video on it. Basically, gets yeah, basic running stuff, ESC program. If you want to do it manually with the ESC, and then just a quick breakdown of uh, uh, the parts and pieces. We did find a couple of errors in here. There's a few screw sizes that are not are on here that aren't listed in the back. Uh, so figuring out the size of them might be a little difficult. And then there's a few screws on the page that's duplicated in here. Really minor stuff, but uh, just things to watch out for. Um, yeah, we were originally going to do a teardown video live on the truck, but uh, we don't got enough internet right now. We're working on that, so we're just going to go through this one and uh, 
check out what's in the bag box. So it also comes with this battery strap that is for if you want to run a 3S battery pack. Right now the truck comes with a 2S battery pack. Now anywhere on the front of the box or on the front of the manual, I did not see a warning that is telling me to gear down before I volt up. Everybody, bye. Everybody knows the old adage in RC is uh, gear, uh, volt up, gear down, right, basically. Um, there's no warnings, so I'm sure the truck is tuned to run on 3S mainly. And, you know, they, they set it up around 2S just for safe reasons on there, so. Um, inside the bag, you have <clears throat> you have these pieces. These are battery stops that go inside the battery box if you're running a shorty battery pack. So you can run a short battery pack, you know, a little stubby. Uh, then they give you nice blue body mounts that go with it. If you want to run a uh, regular style, say J-Concepts body on it, like a lot of guys are switching to. And they even give you the screws to put those in, which is really cool. Or these actually might be for, no, these are for the body post. <laughs> these fellows right here are apparently is it zero caster or something like that? I don't know, I watched a video on it, I gotta look into it, but I believe these are zero caster uh, rear hubs. I don't see how you'd have caster in a rear hub because that makes no sense at all, but, or zero camber. Hopefully the truck doesn't have camber, we'll get into that and figure it out, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, now, let's get this truck out of the box. Little bit of shock leakage on the back and the back shocks to me don't sound like they're full. I've been wrong before so I'm going to open those ones up and check. All the tires are on the right direction. I did see one truck a customer opened up today and one of the back tires was on. It had a wrong tire on the rear. It had a front uh, front drivers on the rear passenger side. So uh, a lot of things people are complaining about on the truck is the, obviously you can see the deco color does not match the body color too well. Um, it's pretty brown. Uh, we do have a lot of LED lighting in here and you can see probably pretty good on the camera that uh, the color of that's off pretty good. Um, quick fix to that is to bust out your hobby knife and trim. Start probably a lot of trimming. So uh, your best bet is going to be send it and when they get a new body they'll get that figured out or I'm sure somebody out there will reprint that and be selling it as a wrap kit. Blood Brothers or somebody like that, they don't seem to care. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure somebody else will come up with a solution. So for now, uh, we were gonna actually cut that out. I didn't realize the top was gonna be so much. I thought it was more just uh, up here. I could trim a little bit in here, you know what I mean? Just kind of make that look a little, little more pretty than right there. Maybe trim this top edge just a little bit, you know? Just that would help. Maybe taper in this around the corner. So it's pretty easy to do. You just grab your Exacto number 11 blade, X Life only. And do not press hard because if you score this body and you tumble it, it's going to crack. Uh, yeah, let's open it up. So the two body clips in the front, little rubber tabs on them, two body clips on the side. 
right underneath the driver passenger, I guess, side or whatever foot wells, if you would. And then it just flips open. You do want to make sure the wire right here is not hooked up to the wire right here. You want to plug that by hand. That's for your body. Ooh, that's stiff. It's fine. Good. Hold it open. <laughs> So yeah, battery, uh, you cool, you cool, you cool, cool. Oh, I see, they just unbolt right off the side, you bolt new ones right on, with the body mounts. Nice. So yeah, if you wanted to take the body off, you just unbolt the body mounts that are holding on the top half of the cage, and then you bolt on these guys in their place. They're a little bit thicker, a little bit beefier, so. Uh, the front ones, I don't know where they go. Probably just right on the truck. I have no idea. I just work here. I just do the deliveries. <laughs> uh, very nice. I like the way they do the shock mounts. The shock mounts uh, are hinged going towards the outside. Um, so they swing in this direction. They're not pinned with a stupid bolt that goes through that way and they're just stretching on the heim joint like a lot of other brands have done with their ride uh their suspension setup <coughs> like the smt uh the way it's set up um it's tough to get the shock to go on a nice wide angle and get that really nice look because you're just maxing out that um uh, pivot ball right so you're limited by that so this is a nice setup i do like that i know a lot of guys is on the uh pages we're talking about putting braces between the shock tower, but I guess from the angle they couldn't see that that's already done. Um, I believe it's this is the lower rod's plastic with a metal rod through the middle, and it does have four bolts in it, so that's sturdy. I believe it does have a metal rod in the middle. I'm gonna have to cut one and a half one day and let you guys know. Uh, the truck comes with the pre-installed sponsorship plates on the side which look fantastic and they already got the decals on there I know on my SMT we they come in the kit which is nice and then you add them on and you put your own decals so that's pretty cool it would be nice if they would have sent a decal sheet with one of these trucks so you could have you know added a little bit more but I'm sure there's legalities against them doing that so um, the front steering shaft in it comes uh, with its pretty nice Decent sized beefy servo with no complaints with that for an RTR. It is metal gear and it is sitting on a metal uh, based uh, servo saver. It's um, with a heavy spring and a, and a thumb adjustment nut. Very, oh, it's tight already. Like a, a 1 8 scale buggy. And the front steering link is plastic encapsulated metal rod inside there. It does run almost to the end, about here inside. And uh, you can't ask for really anything more on a stock. Uh, well, it could be aluminum, like the lower is fully, but there ain't nothing wrong with that. It still has a steel rod in it, so that's gonna be fine. Uh, the sway bars, front and rear, that's a very nice option, or a very nice factory option. Uh, one thing you're gonna wanna do is take, about, take out all the set screws on uh, anywhere where it's aluminum, aluminum connection, like your sway bar, and put Loctite on them and reinstall the hardware before your first run. Also, you want to make sure all your wheels are tight. Uh, some guys have opened them up and found missing hardware and stuff like that. You know, things are happening right now with COVID-19 and uh, just be happy you got one right now because uh, yeah, they're pretty tough to get. Uh, everybody's waiting on them. Um, the chassis is a twin vertical plate chassis. And as you know from other videos, I'm not terribly the greatest fan of twin, uh, twin vertical plate chassis. Uh, but that kind of seems to be all the monster trucks have always been that way since the Claude Buster days. So I think uh, we'll just give it a shot. I do know the bodies get a little more torn up from these in the front, but everything seems to fit pretty good. Lots of travel, no complaints of that at all. Uh, motor and transmission, close this up here. Let me loosen that. Okay, so you open it up again here, check out the motor. The motor sits a uh, side mount transmission because this truck has uh, three differentials, one in the rear, obviously, one in the middle, which is pretty new to monster trucks for guys who've been racing as such. Uh, unfortunately, I hear it's not race legal, so that will need a spool to become race legal, but that's kind of cool for bashing around, and it takes a lot of abuse out of the truck. And then, yeah, of course, the front diff. So now with the center differential, you also have the cush drive in here, which is, um, so you have uh, your, uh, ah, your pinion gear on top, 
Then you do an idler gear in the middle, and then on the bottom you got your cush gear, which then goes into the uh, differential in the middle, which is basically just a rear buggy differential mounted sideways. Pretty simple design. But on the uh, main drive for it, they have a cush drive, which is two gears with three teeth each that fit together, and they have another rubber puck with three, pe three teeth that fit together, so the circle of nine go together to fill the, the gap. So when you're on and off of it, they can take a little bit of that abuse and it just does it just saves so much of the drive line so fantastic idea i know if you've uh any experience with the axial smt10 uh they're great units but i'm sure you've done a few ring pinions in them um even when you get up to the hard steel uh you'll still blow them apart it just happens there's so much power and nowhere to go on them right usually we crank the slippers down and just send it right so uh that's very cool but you're also going to have a more uh mushy fuel with the truck it's not going to be so crisp like when you punch it this thing has 500,000 diff weight in the middle and 100,000 front and rear so it's still going to give you a lot of response but it's not going to be just ridiculous where you can't keep the front end down and it's just floating off the power on the motor right so a lot more drivable this way which is a lot better and also with the far lower center of gravity with having everything uh sitting nice and low it's yeah much better so okay so let's pop some wheels off this guy So the wheel is a short course style design where it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Uh, once again, I'm not a fan of that. I like my wheels like my J Concept Tributes or, you know, Monster Truck wheel where it's the same size in, same size out. And I believe once this is another part of the vehicle that is not race legal. So here's your tire here. Looks really good, da 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 on the outside. Uh, the paint on the beadlock ring is not perfect, but that's, it looks pretty good. A um, little bit of glue on the outside too, but whatever, it's, it's super minor, gonna get beat up. Um, and then you got the inside, not really the biggest fan. You do, you do lose, obviously a lot of the cush from the tire goes away when you get to the inside. So that's gonna kind of give the tire a bit of a weird feel and push all the time. So you'll kind of lose a bit of feeling and handling with that. Or gain it, I'm not sure, it might handle better. I'll, I'll let you know after I run the damn thing, so. <laughs> Um, these screws that hold this inside hex drive on the inside of the rim, which is 17 millimeter, have uh, been reported as coming loose on some trucks. So just want to make sure those are tight before you run it the first time. Uh, and it's plastic, don't use Loctite, that's just weird. <coughs> so the hubs on the front, the back plate, they come factory set at zero degrees uh, caster angle which is good for freestyle and booting around da 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 da. But if you are getting to racing, you just pull out the screws on the bottom. You can take it, take it out a little bit, turn it, clock it back five degrees, put it back in, put the screws back in, and that will give you some caster angle. And caster angle wants to make the tires straighten back out when you're on the throttle going down the straightaway. So you let off the steering wheel, it makes the tires come back quicker and always kind of want to track straight. So um, yeah, so that's a quick adjustment in there. Nothing to it. And uh, these are zero degree toe angle. The rear, I believe, has the three degree toe angles in because it's towed in right now. So yeah. So the rear hubs, these are zero degree. So it's straight, straight axle, like your SMT10. And right now it's got the uh, three degree toe hub, uh, toe angle in ones. It looks towed to me. I'm not sure yet though, so let's go take a look. Super sleuth. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's this is still straight like Jesse just pointed out, but if you can see um, the hex is more to the front than it is to the rear. It's so it's, on the inside, it's taking the cup and it's just turning it a little bit through the bearing, so it's running at three degrees. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to take that out, um, now why they do that is to make the truck track better straight. Uh, it comes from truggy racing. Truggy racing, you tow in the rear, in the front, you tow out just a little bit. And that makes the truck uh, handle much better. I don't know exactly the science behind it, but it just makes the truck handle better, uh, slide better into corners and yada, yada, yada. So especially in a wheelie, if it's got tow in the rear, it holds a wheelie a lot better. So I'm at, that's the main reason they probably did it. Um, 
If anybody's ever seen an X Max hold a wheelie for hundreds of feet, that's you know they just dance on the rear wheels and they got uh, lots of toe. They're set up just like a truggy, so. So some people have broken their axle housings on the trucks already. So we see a lot of people on the uh, Facebook groups asking about the truck, if it's a basher, if it can hang with the Arma or the Creighton, and blah, 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 if it's, you know, an X-Max killer, this and that. It is not. It is a solid axle, 110 scale link truck. If you send this thing too hard, there's a lot of places, a lot of points that are not reinforced, like an X-Max or a Creighton or a Arma, whatever you want to call it. You will break something, I guarantee it. Uh, there's a lot of links. Lots of moving parts and like you know this whole front of the truck is held on with two three millimeter screws. So when you start stuffing this 12-15 pound truck into the ground from 10 feet up there something will break. So uh, take it easy. <laughs> Have fun. Though you see the monster trucks go on TV. If you're keeping it within you know jumps you know, keeping the truck within jumps that are, you know, four feet high, top, sending it from like a two foot ramp and coming four feet high, no problem. But going off a five foot ramp, it's not going to last you too long. You're just going to run it into the ground. It's not what it's designed for. So uh, you might want to stick to an Arma or something else, X-Max or something for that stuff. These are more for booting around, doing little backflips and stuff. These are heavy trucks. And a lot of guys were talking about the slog they have back and forth. Talking about getting new links and yada yada for racing. I don't think you'll ever get away from that. You could add maybe a panard. But you know, really, it's mainly just the upper links at the mounts. And I'm pretty sure we can just tighten them up. I think it's just loose. I think that's a lot of the problem. Because this rear axle has got, like, that's the front moving. But like, look, there isn't like nothing in the rear. And the front of this guy is just sloppy. He obviously is heavier with the servo and such on him, but yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, we, uh, as you can tell, we picked up both the rigs. Uh, beautiful trucks, both of them. Uh, real nice headlights on. This guy's got the blue headlights. This guy's got the red headlights, classic Gravedigger. Uh, same wheels, same tires, same suspension, same shocks, same everything besides the body. Uh, this guy's got green running boards underneath. This guy's got blue with a blue roll cage. Basically, exact same truck. Um, yeah, so we just need to go through them, lock tight all those pieces up, and uh, tighten everything up, make sure everything's good to go. So, in my unbiased, unprofessional opinion, I like it. I've always been a lossy fan. Uh, Lossy's always made wonderful things. When I raced, I raced Lossy. I still have a Lossy buggy actually just picked up to go back do some racing this coming summer after COVID-19 goes away. And we're hoping to start a monster truck racing league here in Manitoba. Now with having ready built badass monster trucks available to the general public. Um, one thing we forgot to mention is the wheelie bar on the back too is adjustable. There's a couple screws you can make it go lower or higher. I think that's okay, I don't think you need anything lower. I guess if you're racing, you don't want to get it up that deep that high, but yeah. So anyhow, yeah, we're gonna rip apart uh, the sway bar mounts. It's pretty much the only thing we can see that's direct aluminum mount and put um, Loctite on them. And then we're gonna cruise around, figure out the mystery of what all these holes are for. If anybody knows, let us know. I'm sure it's for something. Different sway bars, I'm thinking. Probably like big old re-sway bars or something like that. Just a thousand different locations to put them. Yeah. So these are the sway bar holes we found right now, <laughs> right here, so. <laughs> I have no idea. Monster truck is kind of new to us. We built a few. Um, we are gonna order the trio axles. I noticed a couple guys are having problems breaking the axles. So we're gonna order the trio axles for this guy. They make some really nice uh, build stuff and they seem to get it out so quick. It's kind of scary how fast we get stuff out, so. Uh, we should have our batteries by tomorrow morning. We'll have these guys out in the snow making a mess and build some jumps and stuff and get some footage up for you guys uh, early next week of some Canadian monster trucking. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe, like, share, come back, bring cookies. And uh, the cool thing is they got these scale exhaust pipes on here, which saves a lot of problems for us guys always having to 3D order those from like Shapeways for like $7 billion if you live in Canada. So now I'm just gonna order those. They're probably like four dollars from 
uh, Horizon Hobby. I'm just going to order a bag full of those as soon as they're available. So this is one of our Axial SMT-10s. She's been sitting uh, dormant for the last couple months. Uh, it's got a Rock 412 uh, Tekken setup in it. And it's non-waterproof. I didn't get the element proof one. So uh, she just sits, uh, waits for summer to come back. Uh, this guy's sitting on four steer with the original Claude Buster tires on it, which are the heavy ones. And it's got the Pro-Line uh, lock. I don't know. No, I think we're... It might be beadlock. Anyway, here the Pro-Line wheels on it, four-wheel steering on it, fully set up, Vanquish knuckles and CVs and everything all the way around. Um, limiting straps, big sway bars. Very decent truck. Uh, probably very competitive with this guy. But this guy is literally like half the weight of this dude here. Like this is a frick, this is a lot of weight compared to this. He's got to be maybe a third less, third towards a half less, which is silly. Yeah, this guy is more just we built him for tooting around the yard. Uh, fun truck though, definitely, definitely a good looking truck too with the big old tires. And the Forest here is kind of a um, a must for your like hooning monster truck. You wouldn't want to go racing with Forest here. That get broken right quick. It was uh, me again back here working on this truck. Um, like we were just discussing with uh, going through and Loctiting all these bits. We're happy to report that everything has Loctite on it where it should be. So uh, disregard that information. Uh, you might just want to double check, make sure yours got did done properly at the factory. Now one problem we found is uh, people are having are these hinge pins that hold in the C uh, the uh, hub to the C-knuckle are falling out. Uh, Lossy's using hinge pin design for years, so I don't understand why all of a sudden now it's a problem. But uh, there's a set screw that goes here. You tighten the two mil set screw up and that locks that down, tighten bottom bottom top. Now from experience, I know you want to tighten this up, let it sit for a few minutes, and then come back and tighten it up again. It likes to stretch the plastic a little bit and make sure it's snug. And uh, just because we're going to put a little bit of shoe goo just around the top of the pins and then we'll keep an eye on our grub screws make sure nothing comes loose uh, just because it seems to be fairly common so and these arms are a lot smaller and a different type of plastic than uh, what Lossie uses in their race buggies uh, or TLR sorry these are um, in the race buggies so uh, TLR design done by Lossie and uh, we're gonna shoot that just make sure this sticks together just need a little bit on the top and uh, the bottom so we'll pull up both front tires do the tops now flip it over do the bottom later so do that to yours i uh i hate to see you guys lose that hinge pin they're probably gonna uh, they've been sending out a lot so it's probably gonna be hard to get soon yeah so do that to yours and uh happy wheeling okay well yeah there we go this is uh, apparently gonna be the new king of monster trucks from lossy i'm pretty sure uh axial and horizon hobby and lossy I don't know if they're going to do another Axial Monster Truck to compete with them. It would be kind of counterintuitive since it's all the same company now. But, uh, so yeah, I imagine this is the new SMT-10. Uh, we're curious to see what's going to come up for mods and builds and stuff right away, I'm sure. Actually, I've seen on uh, Tony's page there, CCXRC, uh, he's already got his hands on an aftermarket aluminum chassis and a bunch of nice stuff for his build. So uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we'll be following him and see who's making parts and uh, be going from there. We do have both the trucks and uh, we are going to leave them in these liveries, these bodies, because we do have uh, another roller coming uh, when they're available. They were back order or whatever. They came out afterwards, or you guys know. Um, so that shows up in the next week or so. We'll start doing a build off that one. But uh, we'll probably do that build towards spring when they become popular again. Uh, there's enough people doing it right now. It's almost pointless us doing this unboxing video, but we got to do ours too. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to get these things charged up and get them outside. Stay tuned, check it out, and uh, we'll see if uh, we break something. We'll let you know. You'll be first to know. Cheers.